So, as I said, one of the most fascinating things to me when I started studying acupuncture was the law of the five elements. And as it was introduced to us, as the, those of you who are acupuncturists or acupuncture students, was that everything in universe is he or energy, and everything in the universe could be divided into five elements. Those five elements was wood, fire, earth, metal, water. Now in those five elements, the 12 meridian and 12 organ systems was part of it. And as we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So the meridians that was related and organs that was related to this was liver and gallbladder. Here it was heart, small intestine, pericardium, triple warmer, and here was spleen, also known as spleen pancreas, and stomach, and here it was lung, and large intestine, and it was kidney, and bladder. And so, the interesting thing then is, according to the Chinese, everything in the universe could be divided into the five elements. In other words, uh, different climates, so fire, summer was heat, earth was damp and humid, metal fall was dry, water winter was cold, and wood spring was wind. So those factors of weather could affect injury and disease. It's an external factor. Too cold could make us sick. Too much heat could affect the heart. Too much dry could affect the lungs. Too much cold could affect the kidney and the bladder. Too much wind would be harmful for the liver or the gallbladder, and so on and so on. Okay? And so not only was it climates, it was food and flavors and even colors. So the Chinese even looked at someone's face to see what color the facial complexion was in. They listened to their voice to hear what tone of voice they had. And based on their voice and the quality of their voice, they determined whether there was an imbalance. So they listened to their voice, they looked at their face, and then they asked them questions about their emotions and about what's going on in their life and what kind of weather that seems to upset them and what kind of weather they liked, what kind of food they liked and what kind of food they didn't like. Because all the foods was divided into those five elements. All the flavors was divided into those five elements. So this, this, the flavor here is sour, bitter, sweet, spicy or pungent, and salty. So some people crave sweet food, some people crave salty food. Some people like sour, some people hate sour. And so the law of the five elements became this thing where you explain everything. If all the organs and all the meridians and all the emotions and all the weathers and all the climates and all geographic directions and all the seasons were related to those five elements, then everything in universe was related to this. And this is what the Yellow Emperor, which is the first known book in Chinese medicine, where the acupuncturist is having a discussion with the emperor on teaching him on how to stay healthy and live a long life. And so the seasons that was related to those, wood was spring, fire was summer, metal was fall, and water was winter. And in most books, they say that Earth is related to late summer, also known as Indian summer. But if you go back and look at older textbooks, they say that it's actually the end of each season that is Earth. That there's a transition time between the seasons. And then, if that's the case, then Earth is really, in a way, between every season, okay, 
And then there was a geographic direction. So fire was related or to south, because that's where the heat was. Metal was related to west. Winter was related to north, because that's where the cold was. And spring was related to uh, east, and that's where the wind came from, too, and the climate that came from there. And so that leaves one element without a true season and without a true geographic direction. And the earth element, therefore, is about being centered, being balanced, being calm, being at peace. And so Earth then becomes the reference point from wherever you are. So I'm always in Earth, and I'm going north, going south, going east, going west, wherever I'm going. But I'm always where I am if I'm present. Do you see what I'm saying? This is where I am. This is the step I'm taking right now. This is the breath I'm taking right now. This is where I am right here and right now. Now that's Earth. So therefore, if you go and look at old books and scriptures, they had the drawing of the diagram, diagram different, with Earth being the center, the reference point of where you are, if you're present, if you're calm, if you're at peace. And then the seasons, spring moves into summer, summer moves into fall, Falls moves into winter, winter moves into spring. And so the seasons goes all the time and it never ends. But spring doesn't always come easy and it doesn't always come on the first day of spring because sometimes winter roars back in with a storm. And spring doesn't always become summer because sometimes late spring rain come in the summer. And summer is not always willing to give up right away and let go before it lets go of the leaves and the fruits and everything and become fall. And fall could sometimes last a very long time, especially here in California, before it finally turns winter. So the seasons are changing all the time, but the time between the seasons is when people always get sick if you notice it. All the flus and all the colds always break out between the seasons because there's a transition and people are not always ready for the transition. They're not ready to go with the seasons. They're fighting it. They don't, you know, I don't want summer to be over. I'm not ready for spring. I don't have anything to plant. I don't want it to be fall. I didn't get my harvest. So then this becomes a metaphor because the seasons is not only a calendar year of 365 days. A single day could be the four seasons, a spring being the morning when I wake up and I start my day. Summer being with a labor through the day, fall being when I finish my day and I gather in whatever I accomplished. And if I'm hard on myself, I'm going to beat myself up because I didn't accomplish enough. And winter being when I rest and recover so that I could start over again. But what if I don't think about where I want to go or what I want to do. And I just aimlessly wander around, then I didn't plant any seeds. I had to find myself in summer being somewhere I don't want to be. And I had to find myself in fall not getting what I wanted out of life. And I'm going to find myself in winter night not wanting to go to bed because I don't have a harvest. I can't rest. So this flow of how things happen, even this workshop is four seasons. You guys heard about HMT, 
Someone was talking to you about it. Some of you even had your arm twist to get here. And you made a commitment. So that was spring. I don't know exactly what it is, but it sounds like it's something I want. I'm going to make a commitment. I'm going to sign up. I'm going to come. Then once you decided to come here, you planted that seed, then it's summer. That's when the class starts. And it's up for me to make sure that you get excited, that you start seeing, ah, oh, this is actually something. I think I could use this. I could see a harvest. I could see how this could be helpful. And fall is when you leave this class, if you learn something, whatever you accomplished. Some of you are still going to think I'm not good enough. I didn't learn enough. I didn't find the spots good enough, you know. <laughs> but you did the best you could under the circumstances. And then winter is when you leave here, whether you're able to remember, store, and preserve what you learned so you could go out and use it on a, another person and practice it again. And summer is if it st keeps working and points are releasing, and fall is if they felt better, and winter is if you remembered it. And now you go out and you work on three people, and they get better and get excited, and they get better, and you remember that, and you learn from that, and you go out and work on 10, or 15, or 20. This is the principle of the seed. The principle of the seed is to multiply. You don't plant one seed, and you get one seed back. That would defeat the purpose. You plant one seed, and you get tenfold or hundredfold back. And the beauty in this understanding is that you always get a harvest. If you always focus on that you did the best you could under the circumstances and what did you learn. And if you remember what you learn, then you could change your approach, plant different seeds next time. So by process of elimination, you're more likely to accomplish what you're supposed to accomplish. Because Insanity is keep doing the same thing over and over and expect a different outcome. Everyone say, yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. But all of us is doing it. Everyone is in one part or another in our lives, keep doing the same thing over. And that is where we get stuck. We get stuck in one of the seasons, and therefore some of those meridians that have those reflex points on them that are circuit breakers get overloaded. And when those circuit breakers get overloaded, the tissue they're located in causes tension, and this affects circulation, and it causes inflammation, pain, and suffering. And the tension is both in the mind and in the body, and it doesn't make any difference. It's in the organs, it's in the muscles, it doesn't make any difference. It is energy that is stuck somewhere. Because we are not in harmony with our environment and with the seasons and where we are. We're not in harmony within ourselves, beating ourselves up. I'm an idiot. I can't believe I did that. Or we're not in harmony with our spouse or with the school we go to or the profession we're in. So we get stuck somewhere, and we build up tension, and we're in pain, and we have injuries. And Western medicine tells us just take some pills, which just kind of numbs those symptoms. And the symptoms themselves and the disease itself is not a bad thing. It is basically the body is trying to tell us something is wrong. Hey, you're out of balance. So, if you go to look at, uh, let me see here, the next slide, okay, this one is called cause and effect, and so this is what the seasons is about. As you sow, so shall you reap. So what do you do in spring? What does the farmer do in spring? He fertilizes and he plants. If he doesn't fertilize before he plants, he's not going to plant the seed in a very fertile soil. Do you follow me? 
if he doesn't think about what he's planting, if I hate Brussels sprouts, I'm just running into the shed, I'm grabbing some seeds, I'm planting them, and I'm, it is growing, oh my God, it's Brussels sprouts, I hate Brussels sprouts. Now I'm going to have to eat Brussels sprouts. If I didn't think over what I planted, then I might sub subsequently not like what I harvest. But what is spring? Spring is every new beginning. Every word you speak, every thought you have, is a seed you plant. And that seed has an effect. Is it going to be a good seed bringing forth good fruit, or is it going to be a bad seed bringing forth bad fruit? And so if I keep planting bad seeds, if all I could think about how those people are the way they're not supposed to be, then I'm planting bad seeds because I'm having a bad attitude. And now, if all I could think about, if I don't fertilize, if I'm not happy with how some things are at the school, if I'm not happy with how some things is working with my husband, and I don't know what it is I need, all I could think about is what I don't need, then as I'm thinking about what I don't need, I'm planting more seeds and I'm getting more of that. I can't tell you how many times people in, for example, relationships, they see, see him getting the same guy or the same girl every time. And then they start getting frustrated, irritated, and angry. And they keep saying, all women are bitches, and all guys are dicks, or whatever they're saying, you know? <laughs> because that's how they are. Because that's what they manifest. Because all they could thinking about is the bad stuff, instead of thinking about the good stuff. And what do they need to do with the bad stuff? They need to fertilize it. And how do you do that? You have to figure out, because basically fertilizer is the stinking thinking. It's the, all the shit that you don't like. But it's good, because it teaches you what you need. If you could do this, you do a cleansing of your mind. And it's easy to forgive. For example, uh, I'm in my third marriage and now very, very happy married with my, with my wife, that's my best friend. And in my last marriage, when it ended, I was very frustrated, very irritated, very angry, very disappointed. And I realized that if I go out and do this and think like this, I'm going to find another one like the previous ones and the previous girlfriends. So I basically wrote down everything I liked about my previous wives and girlfriends and even my, put my mom in there and everything I didn't like of them and you could imagine it was one list that was very long and one that was not so long. And then I took this list of everything I didn't like and I looked up synonyms so I had even more words describing what I didn't like. To be very clear on what I didn't like. And then I looked up in the thesaurus what the opposite was, the antonyms, and I picked the antonyms that I liked. So my ex-wife, there was a lot of drama, it was craziness, I never know what things are going to happen, you're always nervous walking on eggshells. So I didn't even know what I needed, but I realized the opposite of drama in this craziness was someone that was calm, someone that was at peace, someone with integrity, loyalty. And so I came up with a whole list of things I needed that I didn't have before. And now I got very clear on that this is what I'm looking for. Those needs became my seeds when I went out to look for someone else. It could have been the same thing in work, having bad job experiences, bad friendships, inability to get in shape, being upset with never being able to lose weight or whatever it is, or being unhealthy or being in pain or whatever. So now when I had this list of everything I needed, I could actually attract and get this. If you right now with your career or with your job don't think you have that, all that anger, frustration, irritation, annoyance could be converted to the opposites, which is really what you need, 
now my ex-wife and previous ex-wife and other people, they were all my teachers. They taught me what I need. They did me a favor. And now I'm taking responsibility for my situation. And all of this is related to spring because spring is related to, to planting seeds, being decisive, that's one of the functions of the gallbladder. Planning, that's a function of the gallbladder. Decision making gallbladder. Seeing things, having a vision of what I want, that's related to the liver. But how could I see what I want is if all I could see is what I don't want? So when I cleanse my mind and I get clear on what I need, I could now change my approach so I look for a different person. You guys see what I'm saying? And since all my thinking now is about what I need instead of what I don't need, I'm more likely to attract this. If all I'm thinking about what I don't need, you know what's going to come around? It would be someone else like that. Or it would be another job like that or another school like that, or I'm still fat, or whatever, I'm still in pain, I'm still miserable. Purpose in life, same thing. If I feel my life is not fulfilled, I could write down everything that I'm upset about that didn't fulfill my life. I could figure out what the synonyms of that is. I could figure out what the antonyms of that is. And now I know the things that I'm lacking for my purpose in life. I'm more likely to find it now because I changed my approach. The shit becomes a fertilizer and I could grow from that. Okay, so once I plant a seed, we go to summer, once the farmer plant the seed, it's not like he could change his mind and go and dig it up again. It's planted. Once you say something, the cat is out of the box. Once you make a decision, it's, you're already married, you know? Oh, this might not have been the right decision. Oh, I don't know about this school. I don't know about this profession. Oh, you know? So now I'm going to be in summer. Because summer is, from the moment I started something to when it's completed, it's summer. Now it could be 30 seconds of summer. could be like this, two days of summer here in the workshop. We're having a great time. Or it could be 20 years or 30 years of summer. It's just a metaphor of time. And in that time, what does the farmer need to do? He needs to water and weed. Why does he need to water and weed? Because he wants to have a harvest. And he anticipates a harvest. What happened if the farmer didn't believe he could harvest? Would he still be out there every day in the heat and shoveling and watering? No. So water and weeding, we water and weed our mind all the time. It's our attitude. I signed up for this school. I'm here now. What's good about this school? Let's focus on watering on what's good. Let's make sure everything is good. I marry this person. I'm still committed to him. What is good about this person? Think about that, focus about that, and water that. Something bad comes up, that's a weed. What do I do with weeds? I have to pluck them right away. So what do you do with that? You basically, the weed is the problem. Instead of thinking about the problem, think about the solution. What is the solution? Well, you could figure out what, solu what solution is $10,000. I have no idea how to get that, but that's the solution. Well, the solution is that uh, my husband suddenly becomes nice and considerate or whatever. Well, I don't know how he's ever going to... Don't worry about the how. Just keep thinking about what the solution is. Because you cannot continue to water and weed if you don't believe that it's going to come to a harvest. All right, so we move to fall. Fall is the end of the day the end of the workshop, the graduation from the school. It's actually the end of every day. Every day I could come home and say, am I still loving my wife? Am I happy to see my wife? 
and my that's the graduation from school oh I'm graduated or the finishing this class oh that was it uh, that's what I learned now, oh I should have learned more oh I didn't do good enough everyone else know more than me everyone is better than me or I'm not good enough to do this or I learned a lot I'm gonna get better and better I'm gonna do the best I can so fall is bringing in the harvest and if you don't bring in the harvest if you beat yourself up you're not gonna bring in the harvest if you don't focus on what you learn if you focus on what you didn't learn and where you failed well, then you didn't have a harvest. If you have 20 patients and 18 is better and 2 is not better and you focus on those 2 that is not better, then you did not bring in the harvest. How are you going to feel if you don't bring in the harvest? How would you feel if you don't get things accomplished? It will affect your self-esteem, your self-worth, your posture, how you breathe. In the Bible, there's a story about how the Egyptians, to, to break the spirit of the Israelites, now they're slaves, they're not getting paid, but they were building buildings and pyramids, and they were given bricks. And to break the spirit, they gave them bricks without straw in it. So they build a wall and it collapsed. And they build a wall and it collapsed. And they build a wall and it collapsed. And it defeats their spirit because they don't feel they're good at anything. They don't accomplish anything. So if a person in their life either forgot to fertilize or planted the wrong seeds, have a garden full of weeds or forget to water and don't accept what happened in life and don't feel they did any good, there's never too late. You could stop, realize what you did, learn from it and tomorrow is a new day. It starts over again every day, four seasons, every minute. And then if you go down to winter, winter is store, preserve, rest, recover. The farmer needs to, after he brings in the harvest, the harvest is not going to bring in itself. He has to go out there and pull it in. Winter, store, and preserve. Why is he doing that? He rests, he takes care of his equipment, he maintains his animals and him goes into hibernation, everyone recover, so that they could be ready for the next spring, start over again. And all of this earth is being grounded. Realize that everything happens for a reason, everything happens for a season. And when you're at that, then you're at peace. Then you're in harmony, whatever you are. You guys follow me? Okay. So can we go to the next slide? So now, if, I am, if my action is in harmony with my circumstances, because there's a spring going on all the time. Spring is about purpose, intention, direction, getting clear, decide, and commit. This is liver and gallbladder. The liver have the vision to see where I'm going. The gallbladder plans and make decisions about where I'm going. Planning, decision-making, commitment. Okay, the next one. In summer, in summer I need to be authentic, authentic and engaged. What does that mean? You mean to be real. There's some people that are not authentic. Oh, yeah, everything is great. Yeah, yeah, we're doing great. But they're not really doing great. This is like the emperor's clothes. This is the emperor. Look at me. I'm wearing beautiful clothes, you know, but he's really naked. Those people are in denial. They are telling themselves they're doing great because they're not authentic. They're not true to their heart. If you're in your profession and you don't like it, then your heart is not in it. You're not authentic. It gets very hard to keep doing something. If you're married to someone and you don't really like them, you don't really love them, it's very hard to be authentic because you're actually living a lie at that point. 
So you either have to find a way to be engaged and be authentic, or you have to get out. Because you're not going to harvest if you're not authentic, if you're not getting into it. Meaning you're not going to have a happy relationship, you are not going to uh, accomplish whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. So you need to love what you do and do what you love. One of the two. If you can't do what you love, then you have to love what you do. You have to find a way to do that. Otherwise, your fire, your summer element is out of balance. Your small intestine, your heart, your pericardium, your triple warmer is out of balance. And it causes tension in those areas. If you don't fertilize, if you don't make decisions, if you don't plan, then your gallbladder and liver is out of balance. And then we go back to fall, bring in the harvest, receive, accept, and learn. If you cannot receive, then you're not bringing in the harvest. Like we talked about, many people in caretaking are very good at giving to everyone else, but they're not good at receiving. Lungs, for example, is the organ that's supposed to receive and give. You breathe in, your body gets oxygen, you breathe out, the plants get carbon dioxide. It's a perfect balance. When people have an imbalance between giving and receiving, they have a lung problem. You know how they say on the airplanes, they say, put the oxygen mask on yourself first. Not because they want everyone to be selfish, but they want people to take care of themselves so they survive and then they could help others. And so many people in the caretaking profession are so giving, but they can't receive. So when someone trying to give them a, a compliment or pay them a tip, says, oh, no, no, or, or if someone is going to pay for your lunch, oh, no, 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 we'll, we'll split. Or if someone trying to give you a gift, instead of accepting the gift, you're trying to trade, oh, I'll do something for you then. How do you know you deserve a gift? Anyone. How do you know you deserve a gift or a compliment? How do you know? It's only one answer. When it's given to you. So what are you supposed to do? Say thank you. Look the person in the eye and say thank you. So if you cannot receive, then you can't bring in the harvest. Except, oh, things didn't happen the way I expected it to. Oh, this sucks. Now, I'm not present anymore. I'm stuck in the past. Because I'm not accepting what happened. Accepting what happened doesn't mean I resign myself to never change. Oh, I'm in pain. I have to accept I'm in pain right now. It doesn't mean I resign myself to be in pain for the rest of my life. If I'm out walking in the woods and I got stuck in mud, it was not like I intended to get stuck in mud. I didn't plan to get stuck in mud. I got stuck in mud. Shit happens. So when I'm stuck in mud, let's say, for example, oh, how am I going to get out of here? So I start moving, trying to get out. But let's say it's quicksand, and I'm sinking down more and more. I say, oh, bad idea. Don't move. I'm sinking down more. So now, what am I going to do? I start screaming and yelling, hey, hello, I'm here. But no one could see me, and I start losing my voice. I realized, this is not a very good idea. If I could see someone and I don't have a voice left, then I'm going to kind of be screwed. So I have to accept that I'm stuck in mud, be still, conserve my voice, conserve my energy, and then if someone comes by, then I could flag them down. But the more I panic, the more I do this, the more I'm sinking down. And if I always learn, and if I adopt the belief system, I always do my best based on the circumstances, and I always learn, then I always harvest. If you have belief systems, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not fit enough, I'm not good enough looking, I uh, am not good enough of a therapist, I'm not good enough of a father, mother, husband, wife. If you have those belief systems, you need to change them. Because basically you have an imbalance, you're beating yourself up. 
All right. Next one then is remember what you learned because it has to do with storing. Winter is about storing. The farmer store the harvest in his barn so he could survive the long winter. Remember what you learned and appreciate what you have. Most people that are perfectionist and hard on themselves don't feel like they're harvested and when winter time comes around they can't rest. They have so much to do because they didn't harvest what they thought they were going to harvest. So they have so much to do they don't have enough time and when they believe in that they're stressed out and they can't rest. They can't go to sleep. Their mind is going and going and going. Everyone has blockages in some seasons and for me my imbalances was always in fall and I still have to work on that and sometimes in winter too. And so for example when I get really busy and I'm thinking about all the things I have to do and then I have a hard time falling asleep I have to learn how to turn off my mind through breathing exercises and get present. Present in the breathing exercises because it's night. What are you supposed to do at night? You're supposed to sleep. When you get completely present in your mind and in your body, then you fall asleep. But if you don't know how to get present, because you're thinking about all the things you have to do and you don't understand I have too much to do, then you're laying up at 3 in the morning thinking about all the things you have to do and you're not getting any rest. And when you're in this state, because you didn't get enough harvest, you're not going to appreciate what you have. So you're going to be reckless with your own health. You're going to take spouse and loved ones for granted. And your wife is talking to you and you're watching TV or reading newspaper. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, mm, yeah. So now if you don't appreciate your wife and you're not present with your wife, you're going to lose your wife. Winter is the end of a cycle. You know what that means in nature? That means things either die or it survived to start a new spring. A relationship could die if you don't appreciate what you have. Your body could break down if you are reckless with yourself and you don't get enough sleep. Your money could all be lost if you spend it all if you don't store and preserve and invest. So People with that imbalance, they have a tendency to just rush and run too much. They can't relax. They can't sit still. They keep going and going and going. And very often it's on the kidney and the bladder meridian and they have pain in the feet, Achilles tendinitis, plantar fasciitis, cramping in the calves, pain in the hamstrings, lower back pain, neck pain, sinus pain, ears are clogged, feeling like they have water in the ears, they're tired all the time. They don't know how to rest, they don't know how to relax, they don't know how to be still. Okay? And then, of course, then, Earth is being present and calm. So if you go back here to spring, spring is about a purpose, direction, making a decision, commitment. Summer is being authentic, engaged, and love what you do, and water and weed. Fall is about accepting the outcome, learn, receive, bring it in. Winter is about remember what you learn, appreciate what you have and restore while earth is being calm and present while you're doing all of this. So earth is always present. Next slide please. So when we when we are doing things in harmony, then in spring we'll be clear, calm, and assertive. When you know what you want, when you know where you're going, you're clear, calm, and assertive. And someone comes up and going to bully you says, no, I'm sorry, that doesn't work for me. This is what I need to do. Anyone watch The Dog Whisperer with Cesar Milan? In that show, he says, always be calm and assertive with the dogs. Why is he calm and assertive with the dogs? Because if he's not calm, assertive, and present with the dogs, the dogs can't have him as alpha 
and the dogs is leading the owner instead of the owner leading the dog. And so if you are not calm, clear, assertive, and present, other people would lead you around. They will tell you what to do, or bully you what to do, or decide for you what you should do. And if you're not clear, calm, and assertive, you don't, you either slow at making decisions and you can't make your decision, or you're rushing into decisions and forcing decisions before it's time, before you fertilize. And then the healthy state, in summary, if you're in balance, then you enjoy, calm, delighted, and happy in whatever you're doing. I love what I'm doing right now. This is great. And then, in, in fall, you have empathy, understanding, you're calm and in acceptance. That means when things go wrong, for you or for others, you're not grieving, you're not sad, you're not saying this is horrible. See, there's a misconception. People think if you love someone, you have to suffer with them when they're sad and something horrible happened. Oh my God, that's horrible. Oh my God, oh, I feel so bad for you. Oh my God, I'm sick to my stomach. Oh, now two people feel miserable. Think about it, when your kid it's learning how to walk. Your kid, your child, or you see a child learning how to walk, you see them falling all the time. They fall, they hit their head. They're suffering. They might even be crying because the head is hurting. Now, what do we as parents say then? Oh, you're so tough, you're so good, you could do it. Oh, yeah, clap our hands and you could do it. And we're encouraging them. But what they're doing is they're failing. Imagine if a dad to a kid that is falling too many times say, you better get it right. The neighbor's kid could walk by now. You're an embarrassment. If you don't do this, quit it. You know? <laughs> You're not telling your kid that. You're not telling your kid, oh my God, poor baby, I'm so sorry for you. Don't try that again. You could hurt yourself. I'll carry you forever. <laughs> then you stop their growth. But we just say, this is natural. You're trying to walk, you fall. You're hurt, you pick yourself up, you do it again. And before you know it, you don't even think about it. You learn how to tie your shoes. It was hard in the first, but now you could do it in your sleep. Driving a stick shift car was really hard, but then you learned. Everything is hard and then it gets easy. And if you are feeling really upset and suffer with the fact that, that someone is with someone else, then you make it worse. Let's say your child is trying to learn to ride a bike without training wheels, and they fall. You could see this happen in the playground, and you could see the two types of parents. One comes up and says, oh, you're tough, you're good, you're fine, you could do it, you almost had it. And the kid comes up a little startled, get back on and rides on and forget about it. Or you could have the mom or the dad come, oh my God, what happened, I'm so sorry you hurt yourself, oh poor you. And now the kid looks up, startled, and starts crying, and then the mom feels even worse, and the kids start crying even more. Because the mom is suffering with the kid. And is suffering with the kid helping the kid? Is suffering with your patient helping your patient? If suffering with your spouse helping your spouse? With your mom? Is it helping them? So, the healthy thing is to have empathy, understanding, be calm and acceptance. Of course you don't tell a kid that broke a leg, hey, walk up, walk it up, walk it off, you, you're tough. If the leg is broken, then you stay calm with them, you tell them everything is going to be fine, you make sure you get them to the hospital in the same way, and you stay calm with them. See, when I came to this country, I was 25 and I, my work permit was in trouble and I was going to have to leave the country for six months. It was really bad because the girl I was with, we had rented a place together and we were in a lease and we needed both our income to pay for the lease and we also had a car and we had a car payment. And I was going to go back to Sweden for six months. 
I didn't even have a job in Sweden. I figured I maybe could live with my parents, but, but how am I supposed to help paying for this and at the same time survive being there? So I called my dad and I freaked out. And my dad just says, oh, I'm not worried about you. You always make it. And I was so pissed off at him first because I have a brother that's two years younger. Every time he sneezes, oh, we've got to take Thomas to a camp. We've got to take Thomas to Europe. We've got we to take him to a counselor. We need to do this. And he was there baby him all the time. And he didn't graduate from college until he was almost 30. And then he was unemployed for a couple of years. And then I realized, wow, they did me a favor by not feeling sorry for me, by saying you could make it. And if they would have suffered with my dad, I was, oh my God, that's horrible. What are you going to do? <laughs> you see how things get worse? I was, uh, I was in this country and it was the first year I was here, I think, and I, that was after I broke up with my girlfriend. And it was Christmas and I had a patient that says, oh, it's, it's Thanksgiving. I, I, I was by myself. I was going to go and see a movie and just lay home, watch TV and sleep in. I was perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. And the person says, oh, you're in a new country all by yourself and it's Thanksgiving. You don't have anyone. That's horrible. And I start feeling sorry for myself, you know. It's like, you're right, it is horrible, you know. Was it really horrible? Not really. So empathy, understanding, calm and accepting, suffering is not necessarily bad. There will always be suffering. But if you are there for people, loving them, caring them, but not suffering with them, you're helping them more than if you're just feeling sorry for them. I had one person that was a counselor for a church. It's really interesting. They were told they couldn't give the people when they were crying tissues unless they asked for it. You know how people are when they're crying. Oh my God, here, here's some tissues, here's some tissues, you know. No. Just let them run all over the face and they go, <laughs> and then go, do you have any tissues? Yeah, I have some tissues. Let them be empower themselves. Otherwise, oh, you're really in trouble. Oh, you need some tissues. Oh, you, you can't take care of yourself. Here, I better tell you to get some tissues and wipe your nose, because you're a mess. So then, what is the balanced state in winter? Remember now, winter is not only winter. Winter is night. Winter is the end of anything. Every single day I have a winter at night to be still, cautious, calm and courageous. If I'm not still, I run around and waste too much energy when I need to recover. If I'm not calm, then I'm wasting energy. I'm not recovering. And being at peace, calm and present all the time is the earth. Let me go to the next slide. So what happened then if I get stuck? Because all you people, every single one of your points you had, every single one was because you were stuck in one of those five phases. Do you understand that now? Every tension, every pain, every injury, every disease is that you're stuck in a pattern in one of those four phases. So if you did not fertilize, your soil is not going to be fertile, nothing is going to grow. If you didn't plant, you won't have a harvest because you were tardy or delayed. If you planted the wrong things, if you live in Alaska and you plant bananas, it wasn't so smart, you know. So it's, it, 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 it's going to have an outcome. If you don't water, what's going to happen? Whatever relationship what thing you work on is going to dry out. There's going to be no harvest. If you don't have a positive expectancy, keep watering it in your mind that this is going to work out. This is exciting. This is fun. How is it supposed to survive and come to a harvest? If you get too many problems, too much weeding, then the weeds is going to strangle the harvest. And that's where people have small intestine problems too because of all the negative things. They're not able to sort out the negative. It's too much negative. If you don't bring in the harvest, if you're not good enough, 
well then your self-esteem is going to be affected, you're going to continue to feel bad about yourself and you're not going to get anything. Even if you accomplish, there's some people that accomplish amazing things. I have professional world-class athletes that still think they're not good enough. You know? <laughs> and get mad at themselves. And one guy is so funny, he says, I get so mad at myself because I thought I should have done this and that. And then he read my book and we talked about it. And says, and now I get mad at myself. And then I get mad at myself for getting mad at myself. <laughs> you know? But at least he's recognizing the pattern. You know? And if I don't store or preserve, I'm not going to survive. I'm not going to have enough money. My body is going to break down. My relationship will be lost. My dream will be gone. And that means I'm not in harmony, I'm not being present. In any of those states, I'm not present. Do you understand that? Next screen. So, as you heard me talk about it, very often those people believe different things. And as you heard me talk to some of you when we worked on things, you sometimes heard me ask, and I think especially on, on winter and, and earth, you heard me talk, ask questions. But, for example, one of the stressful beliefs that a person has in spring is, I have to do this, and I don't want to do it. How do you feel if you believe you have to do something and you don't want to do it? Not good. Frustrated, irritated, angry. So is it true that you don't that you have to do it? Or is it is it you need to change your attitude or is it you need to to realize that you don't have to do it? Do you see what I'm saying? You either have to realize you don't have to do it or you have to change your attitude about it and find out why it would be a good thing to do it. The other thing is I want to do this right now. Now, that is the angry one. That is the one that's trying to force the square peg into the round hole. Damn it, it's spring, I'm going to plant right now. The calendar say it's spring, it's supposed to happen now. We said it's supposed to happen right now. But there's a blizzard coming in, the ground is frozen, and he's out there trying to hack up the snow and the ice and force the seeds in the ground. Now this is people that get cut off in traffic and they get mad. People cut them off oh, all the time. People are in my way. They're getting in my way. I'm supposed to be there already, you know. So that's when you believe that, then you're angry. Stop. I've been trying to force this square peg into this round hole now for a week. Maybe I should just stop. Maybe it's not supposed to happen right now. Even if I promised it's supposed to happen right now. There's nothing I could do. If it doesn't go, it doesn't go. And in summer, the negative belief is people think this will never work out. Oh, this relationship will never work out. Oh, this profession is never going to work out. Oh, this is never going to be fulfilling. Oh, working with those people is going to be a drain. When I believe that way, how could I keep working there? How could I keep being in that relationship when I believe that way? I either have to change what I believe or I have to stop doing it because I'm living a lie. I'm not being authentic and true to my heart. Okay? The belief people have in fall is, I should have done this. This should not have happened. I'm not good enough. If you have that belief, you have to change it. I always do, I say to myself every day, I always do the best I can. I always grow and learn and get better. I say it so many times that I start believing in it. When I said it the first time, I thought it was a complete lie. But you say it enough times, you start believing in it. Because for years, I had conditioned myself to say, I'm not good enough. So I've used a negative affirmation. Maybe my parents, maybe my friends, maybe people around me. I start thinking that I'm not good enough, I need to be perfect. And I was an expert at beating myself up. 
the thing people believe in winter, and this is perfect for you and also for, for uh, Kirby, I can't rest until I'm all done. I'm never done, so I could never rest. Or I'm running out of time. I don't have enough. Or I'm missing this opportunity. This becomes a fear-driven belief. I can't rest because <gasps> I don't have enough. I'm running out of time. I'm getting old. I'm missing opportunities. I can't rest until I'm all done. And the earth thing is, I have too much to do right now and not enough time. How do you feel if you believe you have too much to do and not enough time? Anxious, nervous, exhausted. Do you see how these are the snakes? Those are the snakes. Those are the things we've conditioned ourselves to believe and our patients have conditioned themselves to believe. Okay? So is it true? Is it possible that the opposite is true? So if you stop, take a deep breath and sit back, well, maybe it's not true. Okay, next slide. So, this is going to lead to either expressed or suppressed emotions which in my book I talk about too much spring or too little spring. Too little spring is going to be passive, indecisive, and resentful. They can't make their decisions. They're sitting and look at the menu. Everyone else have figured out what they're going to eat, and they still can't figure it out, and everyone else is getting irritated, so they just pick something that someone else tells them to eat. They eat it and then they don't like it, okay? Or uh, they're going to sit home and do homework and their friend says, hey, we're going to go out. Come on, don't be a bore. You know, come on. So then they go out, they go to the party, they come home, they have a hangover, they don't have time to study for the test and the test doesn't turn out and they're mad. So that's the passive aggressive, the pushover. Do you see what I'm saying? Too little spring. They don't know what they want. They don't speak up. They don't set boundaries. And then they have the too much spring, which is frustrated, irritated, anger, and blame. They try to bully everyone to get whatever they want to happen. Now, this is very important. I want you to really pay attention to this. In the four season system, everyone has all imbalances. And no one is good and no one is bad. It's just people that are temporarily confused. And if we call this one the pushover and this one the bully, then we are putting judgment phrases on them. I'm only using them for you to understand, but I don't want to call your patient a bully or a pushover necessarily, because people will then tend to get very defensive, and then they will not hear it. The bully, for example, cannot see that he or she is a bully. They're just very, very determined, very, very strong, very, very opinionated, and they're used to getting it their way. The pushover doesn't know what they want. They can't speak up. They can't say no. They can't set boundaries. They don't even know what they want. They don't even know how to ask for what they want. And then, of course, in summer, the emotions you have that is suppressed is you either delusional, overexcited, frenzy, or a fake. You guys always see that person. Oh, yeah, everything is great. No, we're doing fantastic. Yeah, I'm feeling great. You know? <laughs> you know? It's almost like in, in Europe, they think of many Americans being this. Because it's true that different cultures have more of certain times. They think America is, everything is big in America. The hamburgers are big, the cars are big, the freeways are big, you know? Uh, everything is big, you know, and the personalities are big and the hats are big and everything, you know. And the tendency of being too much, being over emotional, being over excited, being frenzy and fake, then you're not completely authentic. Or the opposite, being in despair. Why are you in despair? Because you don't believe you're going to have a harvest. Oh, it's not working out. 
That's kind of like probably where you were with your job, in despair. I'm not sure this is going to work out, you know? Uh, joyless, melancholic, lifeless. And then, of course, the suppressed emotions for fall is if you are beating up on yourself or you can't accept what happened, you're feeling sadness, grief, regret, or guilt. Then you are emotionally constipated. Do you follow me? That's all holding on. Large intestine is supposed to accept the outcome, let go and move on. If you don't let go, then you're holding on, holding on. Sadness, grief, regret, and guilt. Or the opposite, emotional diarrhea, where well, you don't give a shit. Apathy, indifference, and self-rejection. In either case, are you learning? Do you see what I'm saying? In either case, are you accepting the outcome? And you can't move on. Even the guy that is apathetic, he's just, forget about it. But he hasn't learned either. This one is holding on, can't let go. And then, of course, the emotions, if I can't rest until I'm all done, and I'm never done, so I could never rest, is fear or terror, or the careless or reckless. The careless or reckless with their body, with the relationships, with their money, with their health, because they can't rest. Or they're fearful and paralyzed and can't move forward because they haven't harvested and everything in the world scares them. And this is what makes this so beautiful. If you're not having harmony and peace, being present, then you have anxiety or depression. The two most common negative emotions is anxiety and depression. The reason why is that earth is present in all seasons and you will have frustration, irritation, anger, anxiety, or you have passive, indecisive, resentful and depressed. You will have delusional, overexcited, frenzy, fake and anxiety, despair, joyless, melancholic, lifeless and depression. You will have sadness, guilt, grief, and, and uh, regret, either anxiety or depression, apathy, indifference, self-rejection, either anxiety or depression. So earth is always present because earth is about being. All those other seasons is about doing. Fertilizing, planting, watering, weeding, bringing in the harvest, and storing and preserving, but earth is being present while you're doing all those things. So anytime you're not present, you have a slight level of anxiety, fidgetiness, nervousness. That means you're in the future. Anxiety is always about the future, you're not present. Or you're blue, bummed out, depressed, which you are in the past. But when you're balanced and present and calm, you're at peace and in harmony. Next one, is that the last one or is there one more? All right. So here we get the meridians. So gallbladder is decision making and boundaries. Liver is clear vision, planning, purpose and ideas is coming from the liver. If you don't have purpose, the liver might be clogged up. The reason the liver might be clogged up and can't see the purpose could be because you have too much stuff in the past you're upset about. Small intestine filter, that's what the small intestine is. Small intestine is a filter. It filters nutrition, keep the nutrition, let go of the waste. Supposed to do that in the mind too. Keep the positive, let go of the negative. Discernment. Is this good or is this bad? Is this thought a good thought? Is it benefiting me or other people? Is what I'm speaking, do I speak in good thoughts? Am I helping others or myself? Because the tongue and the speech is related to the fire. And if I'm speaking negative, then I'm not true to my heart. 
Fas so heart is being authentic, true in speech and action. Triple warmer is having fire and passion. And if I don't have any fire or passion, if I burned out, I have problems with my triple warmer. Or if I'm burning too much, like frantic, <laughs> you know. And very often then people and women also in menopause might get problems with hot flashes or cold or, or people having thyroid problems and all this stuff too. Pericardium is the wall that protects the heart, especially in relationship. And it's unconditional relationships. Anytime a relationship is not unconditional, you're hurting that person and you're hurting yourself. Large intestine is about accepting the outcome, learn and move on. And lungs is about accept, receive, learn, and let go. Urinary bladder is about control and preserve. The bladder control the release of fluid, and it preserve fluid, holds it. And the interesting thing is that the brain, which is will restore our memories in Chinese medicine, is related to the kidney and bladder. Because the brain is called the sea of marrow, and the bones is related to kidney and bladder. And kidney is the well of energy. It represents willpower. And people that have winter imbalance very often has very strong willpower. And what they do is to go and drain the well all the time. Oh, a little bit more energy. Oh, I could go out and spend it. Oh. I feel a little bit pretty fresh. Maybe I could work another two hours. They never ever stop when there's something left in the tank. They go until they drain the tank. That's a kidney imbalance then. You're going to have blow out your back, which is very common. And then stomach is balanced digestion and being present. And spleen pancreas is grounded immune system, fertility, and maturity and also being present. All right, was that the last one? So that is my interpretation of the five elements explained in a metaphor so that it could be explained to the patient as you work on them. And so people could pick up the book and read about it and so that people could see for themselves that their life and their health is in their own hands. And that our own actions, our thoughts, and our feelings, and what we believe in, is what creates the health and the condition we're in. And that whatever we plant, we're going to reap. And that if we're not in balance with this, then we're not in balance with the universe, with nature, with our own surroundings, with our own mind. All right.